everyone and welcome back to McKegg's Movie Mayhem in association with WBBJ7 Eyewitness News. I am your host Eli McKegg and today I'm going to be doing the movie review for Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice! <laughs> Now, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice is the sequel to the original Beetlejuice movie, also directed by Tim Burton, with the returning Michael Keaton playing the titular character. And I have to say, I am someone, just to give preamble, I am someone that grew up with the original Beetlejuice movie. I also grew up with the Beetlejuice animated show. Yes, there was an animated show in the early 90s. I grew up with that show, I grew up with that movie, and so I have a fondness for this character, this movie series that I think a lot of people also have, but also just having that connection to those characters from a young age, it just has made me look, it's probably going to color my view of this movie probably differently than other people. So I just want to go ahead and get that out of the way to get people prepared for probably a review that might be a little over positive, maybe, who knows, we'll find out as I continue talking, but I have to say, I really did enjoy this film. I very much felt like this was a worthy successor for the original Beetlejuice. Now, do I think that this movie is better than the original? No, I don't. Nothing can be, no matter what sequel was going to get made, it was not going to be better than the original Beetlejuice because the original Beetlejuice was just so fantastic that first time. Like, it did everything it needed to do right, and it was great. This one, I think it does a lot of great things. I think it does a lot of things right. But then there are also a few things that I feel like sort of bog down the movie as well. Because there were moments where I thought that the plot were was a little overcomplicated. And then there were moments where I was just thinking, man, I feel like they have too many pieces of this puzzle right now. And I don't know if those pieces all work together. For example, there is a side plot with Jenna Ortega's character and it's one of those plots where it's just it goes this way where other things go in the opposite direction but then also they find a way and the though I might not have been a fan of just having that plot exist I do like the fact that Tim Burton and crew were able to take the other plot with Lydia or Winona Ryder's character and Beetlejuice and able to weave it together with Jenna Ortega's plot. I, I really enjoyed that they were able to make that connection right there. I also feel like there are some plot elements that were a little too similar to the original Beetlejuice. Like, for example, Jenna Ortega's character, Astrid Dietz, and Winona Ryder's character, Lydia Dietz, they are at odds with each other because very much Lydia has sort of not fully moved on, but her ex-husband has passed away, and so she is sort of having to move on, and Astra Jen Ortega is not moving on, which is very, basically the exact same sort of relationship plot that Winona Ryder Lydia had with her parents and her stepmother in the original Beetlejuice. So it's very much just very similar connections of all that. but. I will say I did enjoy that we did get to experience the n other realm of this universe or like the afterlife part of this universe. That was something that was very interesting to me because the afterlife was so zany and so chaotic and so crazy that when we got to explore a little bit more in this film, I was very much enjoying it. I enjoyed the different little moments in this film that dealt with the afterlife. And I think that a lot of the cast as well understood the assignment. They understood they were in a Tim Burton film and so they needed to try to match the Tim Burton sensibilities. And I think they all worked really well. I think all the characters and all the actors and actresses worked really well in this Tim Burton film. I mean, just to highlight one of the actors in the film, Michael Keaton as Beetlejuice, got back in the seat, no issue. It felt like he hadn't even been away from the character. And it makes sense because this character of Beetlejuice is very important to him and very close to him for the simple fact that he was allowed to, to create a lot of what this character had, a lot of the costuming, a lot of the 
makeup design from the original film, he had a say in what it would look like and, and what he would look like in the film. And so seeing how he was able to continue carrying those sensibilities and that importance, it was very good to see that continuation. And also it was great to see Michael Keaton back as Beetlejuice. He, again, he didn't feel like he lost anything. Winona Ryder returning to play Lydia Dietz, I feel like she did a great job as well sort of having to go through, she went through an arc in the very first one, and then you sort of see a hidden arc that was set between the first and second film, and it was sort of fun to see, or interesting to see, how her character has sort of changed from how the first movie ended to how we're starting, because we're having to sort of, because she's gone through more years, and because she's gone through more experience, she had to change a lot of what she was like in the original film, and I really like where we start with her and then her going through the arc that she got, does in this movie. I think her arc is very beautiful and I think she does a really great job in the film. Another actress that I want to shout out is Jenna Ortega who plays Astrid Dietz, the daughter of Lydia Dietz. And I think Jenna Ortega is just perfect for the Tim Burton sensibilities. I mean, she played Wednesday Adams in Tim Burton's Wednesday show on Netflix. And I think Jenna Ortega has done a really great job sort of finding her niche in what, in like finding her niche in the type of actress or actor that Tim Burton wants. Because Tim Burton has a specific style and he has a specific way of how he directs his actors or actresses, and he has just a specific vision. And I think Jenna Ortega from Wednesday and in Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, I think she's found a way to match her acting style with his directing style. And I think I would not be shocked if Tim Burton, as more film, if he makes more movies and more TV shows, if she is a frequent collaborator, if she becomes sort of like his next Johnny Depp or Helena Bonham Carter, an actress that is constantly in his projects, because she did a great job in this film. I think she's amazing in this film. I think the entire cast does a really great job with what they're giving. However, again, there are some side plots that I didn't really think needed to be there. And though I liked how they were able to weave some of the plots together, I still think some of those side plots didn't really need to be there. I think some of the characters like their storylines were a little undercooked. For example, Monica Bellucci's character, who is sort of playing the ex, ex-wife ex of Beetlejuice, um, her character very much felt undercooked. I've, her character very much in the trailers made it seem like she was going to be the main antagonist of the film. She was going to be the person that we all need to worry about. But she's not in it a lot, and I feel like there was a lot of story stuff that we could have had with her that we just didn't have. And it was just, it just felt like we were over promised something that, we were over promised something with Monica Bellucci and we just didn't get everything. And I think that was something with her character specifically where I was just like, man, I would have liked if we had more of her. And, but yeah, the, some of the side plots were a little, like didn't, weren't necessary. I think Monica Bellucci's character was a little underwritten and uh, the, what was the second thing? I can't remember what I said, but, there, but it was about the writing. I think some of, but yeah, I just think some of the stuff could have been worked on in terms of the story. But overall, I really didn't enjoy this film. I very much would recommend this film. If, if someone were to come up to me and say, hey, Eli, would you recommend going to watch Beetlejuice Beetlejuice this weekend? The answer is wholeheartedly yes. I had a lot of fun with Beetlejuice Beetlejuice even with the unnecessary side plot or some of the unnecessary side plots, the underutilized Monica Bellucci and some of the other stuff that felt undercooked in the oven of the story, I really do think this film is a fun time just by the cast. The cast does a great job bringing these characters to life, bringing the afterlife to life for lack of a better term. Also the music by Danny Elfman, he's back doing the music and he just, he, he's great. I love Danny Elfman, and I think his work with Tim Burton is great. And also, I loved when they got to use practical effects in this film. Like, Tim Burton is someone that he lives on practical effects, and I just love when directors who live on practical effects can do practical effects. And I think that Tim Burton was able to utilize practical effects 
perfectly in this film. So overall, I highly recommend this film. I feel like people need to go out and support Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. So I give this movie a three and a half out of five stars, a seven out of 10. Next week, I'm gonna be hopping into the horror genre again as I watch the newest film starring James McAvoy, Speak No Evil. But until then, I've been Eli McKegg, you've been the audience, and I hope you all remember to watch movies. Thank you.